Excited to be here today with Dr. Brandon Crawford of the Neural Solutions uh, fame, getting ready for a uh, conference in Australia. Gonna, Absolutely. Gonna, gonna go back and uh, and take some time with some of our koalas, right? Oh, that's amazing. It's <laughs> a good deal. So excited well, to uh, to be able to visit with you today. You have some questions for me that uh, that you feel would be really helpful for the people that will be attending this conference, and I'm excited to share with them and share with them some of the the new things that we're working on. Absolutely. So you know, thank you for being with us, for partnering with us, and you know, it's it's I've known you personally for a long time now, and I think that you know the person behind the product is always very important for people to understand because you're a phenomenal person, you're a brilliant mind. And I really love how the ResiMax was developed out of your own need. You know, your, your story is very uh, inspirational and that's, that's always, I mean, you know, just like what, you know, we do with our lasers and everything, like we're constantly, like I'm working on some developments right now based on our clinical needs that we see clinically. So whenever you have a product that's built by someone that's, um, you know, just passionate about helping and healing others, and then they needed it themselves, you always get a better end product. But um, so thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done, for everything you've brought uh, to this field. But what we're doing is we're building uh, this NeuroSolution methodology um, and so within that, we have these three key pillars, um, and those are energy, sensory, and movement. Um, so if you think about it, energy is like the gas in a car, right? So if you get in your car and there's no gas, uh, you're not going to go anywhere. I don't care if you drive a Lamborghini. I don't care what it is. You're not going anywhere. So we first need to address uh, fuel systems uh, in order to really promote healing and everything. And then we move into sensory systems. And this is really where the ResiMax comes in. Um, and sensory systems, I say, are like the steering wheel, but also the spark plugs, because you need your spark plugs in order to fire your engine, but then you need your steering wheel in order to steer your car while you're moving. That's our sensory systems. Um, and then our movement system is like our pistons driving those wheels. Um, but like you, you know, told me just a little bit ago, that sensory component is vital whenever we're organizing those movement systems. And so um, can you give me some uh, concepts, some ideas? I love the way you talk about like the scraping technique and all of these things and how this organizes um, the nervous system. And not only that, but I mean, the the brilliancy of the harmonics that's built into the Resimex, because that is phenomenal in and of itself. Well, I, I absolutely uh, love what we came up with and what we developed. There's, um, there is a probably the first thing people need to understand is I can't tell you exactly what frequency when you push start on this thing is going to reach you up at the brain. I don't know, but I do know it has an effect on the brain and it helps the brain organize itself. So I can tell you that when we turn the device on, the range that we created this device to uh, mimic or to use is the purring range of a cat. It's a very therapeutic range. It's been well studied, um, helps with anxiety and all kinds of other things, but that's because of its effect on the brain and the nervous system. Uh, interestingly, it also uh, kicks in stem cells. We know that because vibration at this level speeds up bone healing by 66%. If you can access stem cells, you can speed up the body's healing in so many ways. And maybe that's how the cat purr helps the cat and many other animals to be able to heal. So one of the uh, one of the things that we found absolutely fascinating is at these levels that the device creates, simply making the scraping process, the scraping process actually comes from a term called gua sha or in Japan, guasa. It, it was an Eastern medicine, if you will, that developed over centuries and, and thousands of years, and they would take rocks and horns, and they would scrape the body parts with it in an effort to sort of reconnect the brain to that area. I don't know if that's what they were thinking, but they found that when they would scrape on body parts, it would speed up the brain or the ability for the body to heal. 
So when we take our device and we do a lot of the scraping process, it helps the organization that haps, happens right up here in your prefrontal cortex, happens right up here in the motor strips. That's where, and, and the cerebellum, that's where the messaging of you scraping clear down here at the fingertips actually is processed, is up here in the brain. So one of the funny things about this is we received some help from our, uh, from our friends over in Australia and New Zealand with this. You see, I used to tell people, oh, spend about five minutes scraping on different parts of the body and it'll help uh, the brain organize itself. And then I had a mother um, call me up one day and she said, you know, we've been doing that scraping thing about 30 minutes a day and it's making a world of difference for our child. And I said, 30 minutes a day, that's a lot of scraping. She said, it's working. And, uh, and suddenly we realized that that's exactly right. If a person can't sense and feel their body parts, they can't organize their brain correctly. So that sensory pillar is absolutely pivotal, and that scraping with calibrated vibration helps the brain organize itself so that movement can occur. You know, that uh, there's so many things I want to digest there. Um, so you mentioned something that definitely perked my ears up. So I love stem cells right now. I'm on this whole regenerative medicine kick. Um, you know, I've been connected to very influential biohackers, had a great conversation with Dave Asprey. Um, and obviously with, you know, being in laser therapy, regenerative medicine, you know, and laser therapy go hand in hand. Um, so one thing that I noticed ever since we started using the Resimax is when we combine laser use with the Resimax and specifically with the scraping technique, um, there was what seemed to be some type of synergy. There was some type of synergistic approach, uh, when we combine those things and we've been using vibration, right? So it's not like uh, you can just vibrate and get the same type of results with a different product because we did that. Um, so it's interesting you brought up this concept of stem cells because <clears throat> one thing that we're looking at is when you laser over an area, let's say like the sternum, right? You start to enhance, you start to proliferate more mesenchymal stem cells within the sternum. Um, those then can go out and start to proliferate into organs and into other structures of the body. Um, so it's interesting that, you know, let's say we're, we're, you know, Resimax, we're, we're stimulating a hand for like a primitive reflex. I've noticed that if, if we actually laser the hand and then concurrently laser the cerebellum and then maybe other parts of the brain that uh, are connected to the hand, we're getting a massive uh, synergy and we're seeing those reflexes integrate faster or we're, we're seeing pain syndromes uh, go away so much faster. And, you know, I've never even thought about the stem cell component. Um, when, I mean, how did that really come about? Like, how did the the idea and the thought process about how we're influencing stem cells with the Resimax come about? In particular, I started looking at, we've been doing a lot of research around the, uh, the, the oral facial region. And, uh, and I, and I started to realize that there is a massive amount of stem cells in in the sutures of the skull, um, in the the roots of every one of your teeth. There are little packets or pockets of stem cells, and these are very important. And and so you've got all of these cranial, uh, facial connections, skull connections, where. If we can access or if we can stimulate those stem cells, we do get improved healing in the entire system. So then I came across some research on vibration and bone healing, and I found that that in particular that uh, um, the purring range of a cat, that purring range, that's a energy level, an energy range that we designed our tuner to, that range uh, speeds up bone healing by 66%. Now, in the article, they didn't say, well, of course, we're, we're, we're affecting stem cells here, but you can't look at speeding up bone healing without it affecting stem cells. That got me thinking, and someday we're going to do research on this. I'm certain of it, but that got me thinking there's no way to speed up healing 
without affecting things like stem cells. And, and direct research that shows that stem cell activity improves or bone healing improves when you stimulate it with the right kind of frequencies, that just makes complete sense. Then you add into that the energy, and that's what you're doing when you're shining the, uh, the, the laser on certain parts of the brain is this, this little device is sending information up to the brain, but it doesn't have enough energy oftentimes to organize itself, but the, uh, the laser does that. So it's, it's a beautiful, perfect combination. Yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. It really is. Um, and then the other thing that got me thinking through, uh, or got me thinking with your, your discussion there was, um, the scraping and how the interplay of that scraping, um, and the fascia come into play, because, um, when I start thinking about fascia, I start thinking, um, about the fascia, like a semiconductor, and this is how electrons are flowing through the body. Um, and what people don't always realize is that, you know, if you have, this disconnected fascia, or I always tell people like, think about plastic wrap and it gets all crinkled, right? That can alter the flow of those electrons through mm -hmm. the fascia, AKA the semiconductor. Um, do you think that as we're doing that scraping technique, um, that we're actually eliminating some of that fascial interference and perhaps that's, what's making this so much more effective. You know, I'll, I'll give you a great example that'll give my answer. Um, a year or so ago, I was working with an individual that had become paralyzed in, a, in an accident, she could not feel her legs, could not move them. Here we are nine months after the accident. This person had had no voluntary movement in, in her legs, and we scraped the, the legs and the feet. And the first thing that she noticed was pain. But she was almost crying and laughing at the same time because the pain was a sensation that she could identify with. And she hadn't had real sensations down in this area for such a long time. But after five minutes of scraping down around her feet and ankles, she could move her toes. First time in nine months. And for her to be able to see that, feel that instantaneously, some lights went off in her brain that started the process of getting her back onto her feet out of a wheelchair for a large part of the day, walking to the point where she could get to uh, forearm crutches and, and uh, now even uh, working on riding a bicycle again, working on the balance, working on all that. You know, those are things that, um, to answer your question, if we can, if we can, uh, can sense it and feel it, the phone lines are back up. Mm -hmm. In essence, scar tissue and and connective tissue, fascia. Um, I think that when the body senses and feels through that and through the nerve endings, everything works better. We can get the muscles to function. But if the brain feels, or if the uh, the brain and nervous system sense a blockage, and that could come from scar tissue, that can come from disruption of nerve endings down to an area. If we can recruit more sensation in the area, the brain can then start remembering how to make the muscles work again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it just makes sense. It's common sense. Um, and, you know, I actually had some scrutiny uh, from colleagues and whatnot, you know, again, just referencing a Palmer reflex, you know, because my hand's here, um, you know, there's, you know, some say, well, if you're going to work on the reflex, you can only stimulate the palm, you can only just, you know, draw an X or do the, and, you know, we're sitting here with the Resi Max, we're stimulating the palm, we're going over the fingers, between the fingers, we're even going up the arm into the muscles, we're doing the scraping technique. Um, and I mean, look, we're just going off of clinical evidence, okay? If something works, we're going to lean into it, and we're going to continue to do it, okay? And, and if it doesn't work, we're not going to do it, we're going to shift. But we consistently noticed that this actually got better results. And again, it brought scrutiny, but whatever, we're okay with that. And so my thought process was exactly what you were saying. Um, but then, you know, again, just going back to the fascia, I mean, it just makes sense if we're clearing that interference, that there's going to be a better neuro neurological connection between that part of the body and the brain. Therefore, whatever you're trying to do, whether it's motor planning, whether it's primitive reflex integration, 
whatever it may be, it's going to happen better. It's going to happen faster and more efficiently. So it's, you know, just brilliant. I love the scraping technique, you know, in the, in the home care we write, we literally say Resi Max scraping technique. And then, you know, of course we, you know, show, you know, show everyone how to do this and everything. Um, definitely a fan favorite here. I remember, you know, funny enough, this just came to mind. I remember the first time you actually demonstrated this on me, <laughs> it was in an airport um and you know we're sitting there and you're like take your shoes off and i'm like well, okay so i take my shoes off and we're in the airport and you're sitting here like scraping my foot with the resi max i remember though like my entire head started to tingle um that was a really cool experience uh you know i'm sitting there in the in the airport having you work on my my foot and of course you know everyone you know throw around a butt and everything um, but I'm just curious, do you ever get patients that say that, like they start to feel like a tingle in their head or something? I mean, that's what I felt. Especially our patients with neuropathy. And these are people that may not have been feeling completely their extremities, maybe not even being completely aware of it, but just realizing that their balance is not quite as good as it used to be, or that, you know, they're stubbing their toe a lot more. But when you uh, get working on their feet or their legs, it's like they feel lighter and they feel like um, the sense of connectedness and their balance immediately improves. And for some of our long term people that have had uh, peripheral neuropathy, oftentimes within one session of 10 minutes of scraping from the tips of their toes all the way up and up their spine to reconnect the brain to that area. Within minutes, 70 to 80% improvement in their sensation. Mm -hmm. And sensation literally drives function for the brain and body. So that's part of the reason that they feel this lightness and this connection going on is because they're back in touch with, uh, with the very far po nether parts. That's the awesome. Far parts yeah. of the body. You know, you when you were in my office maybe a year or two ago, um, I had some back pain, you know, obviously working with the types of patients we work with. It's really physical and I've, you know, injured my back a few times. And I remember you had me lay on the Resi Max. And so this is these are my legs. You had me moving my legs kind of like, like this while that Resi was light at my um, lumbosacral junction area. Um, I still do that. Uh, I still do that. But, you know, again, going back to the stem cell concept, I've had uh, stem cells uh, for my low back pain. Uh, and by the way, I don't have any back pain anymore. I just still do this to keep uh, keep the motion going and all that kind of stuff. But it's just amazing, you know, thinking that was probably driving uh, stem cells into my discs and into all the structures, into the muscles. Uh, um, that's really cool. So that's that's a really cool um segue because that's a great discussion regarding like the spark plug right so we're we're igniting the systems the sensory systems you know igniting it but then going back to my reference of the car right we have the steering wheel um so that's where you start talking about how the sensory is so important to organize movement and and it's it's amazing you know that you say it that way i love it but you know this is where you can start to use the resimax now to help organize movements? Do you have any kind of discussion points or anything to talk to about that? Yeah, you know, I was having a discussion recently with uh, um, one of our Olympic athletes. He's going to be running the 100, 200, and 400, and he's using his Resimax every day to help his brain connect better with his feet. He took uh, silver at the Olympics last year in the, or last time in the 200 meters. And he, and he runs the Winter Olympics, so he comes out and trains out here in Utah on the bobsled. But anyway, um, I was having this discussion with him about uh, you know needing to make sure that he is always aware of every part of his body from his tips of his toes all the way up. And, and so we spend about you know five or ten minutes scraping everything, and then he goes out and does his workout because it's energized. The lights are on, the communications there, the sense of balance is way improved. And then we can go out and develop the best muscle memory patterns. Mm -hmm. So if you can stimulate those areas, give them energy, give them laser, give them uh, give them vibration through our tuner, give, give them all that input, and then put them through very specific exercises. 
the brain is better able to organize itself and remember the pathways that it needed to go through to be able to accomplish movement. Absolutely. That's where we open it up. That's amazing. Yeah. And, you know, if we're dealing with um, like a cerebellar ataxia or, or we're wanting to, you know, help someone with motor planning or something like that, uh, we'll have simply, I mean, just take like a finger to nose type of exercise. We'll have them hold that Resimax and actually induce vibration so that now when we're targeting and we're starting to do this exercise, it's just an added stimulus and it's helping those feed forward and feedback mechanisms within the cerebellum to help um, better predict. And it just, it, it again, it enhances therapy, right? So anytime we can do anything for our patients that they get better faster and more efficiently, we're all in. So, um, you know, it, it's just a phenomenal concept to think about, you know, how you can really start to um, help someone in this regard. Um, one thing I want to to ask you, because of course, I, I love, love, love the vagus nerve. I love, love, love the trigeminal nerve. And these two systems, the vagal system and the trigeminal system are key, not only just from for Resimax, but I mean, they're key to healing so many different things, whether it's brain injury, pain syndromes, stress and anxiety. I mean, you name it, right? So what is your favorite way to hack, to stimulate the, the vagus nerve using the Resimax? Well, the very first one, and, and of course, Part of the theory on why this all works is simply that you have a branch of your vagus nerve that is responsible for your vocal cords. The recurrent laryngeal branch, the vagus nerve, that's all it does is vibrates. And so your body, your brain is super tuned in to frequencies in the vibrational harmonic field. But you better make sure that you're using... Um, something that's very calibrated with them, like a musical instrument and not a jackhammer. You know, both kinds of vibration are, are ends of the spectrum, but one kind is going to be healing and the other kind is uh, not so therapeutic. So with the vocal cords being a branch of that vagus nerve and the trigeminal being an opposite of the of the uh, vagal system, vagal system driving us towards health, happiness, sleep, uh, making more of those beautiful children. You know, the vagus nerve is in charge of all of those things, but the, the trigeminal nerve is in charge of making sure that food gets chewed up and sent down, but it's also playing a very big role in the fight or flight process. Did a whole uh, paper on that, and it's published in the journal Oral Health. Um, if anybody wants to look that up, it's pretty cool. But the uh, the big key here is when the tone of the vagus is high, the tone of the trigeminal is low and vice versa. So when the trigeminal is high and the vagus is not functioning very well, we have anxiety, pain, depression, and all of those frustrating things ruling our life. When the trigeminal tone is down and the jaw tension is out of there and, and the, uh, the, the vagus nerve is functioning well, we're digesting, we're sleeping, we're doing all of the things that help us enhance the recovery. One of my favorite things is actually, and it's all anatomically based, the back of the neck, the C1, C2, the muscles that go from C1 and C2 and up to the skull and down to the neck, those muscles are highly, highly susceptible to tension. So if you just clamp down your jaw, immediately you'll feel a tension in the back of your neck. Well, if yeah. we want to take tension off of the jaw, let's take all that tension off the back of the neck. So we have a, a beautiful little technique where we uh, place the uh, tuner tongs and the device right there so that we're putting pressure right on that, uh, right on those upper cervical muscles. And one of the coolest thing about those muscles is they have a connection to the dura which means that they have a straight connection to the brain that uh, that no other muscles really have. There's very few other muscles that have, and they're all here in the skull area. But that connection to the dura helps you uh, release a lot of tension out of the system. So there, and doing the inside-the-mouth techniques that take all the tension out of the jaw and the pterygoid muscles, those are some of my absolute favorites. But if you want to go to sleep fast at night, you'll 
put it right up here. That's my go to sleep button. Nice. And uh, so there's all kinds of spots and places that you can put this. But probably what's most important, Brandon, um, or Dr. Crawford, is you can't learn all of this stuff in, in 30 minutes. So we have recently done a, uh, we put on a course and it was completely um, um, videotaped and organized. It comes to about four and a half hours. I would like to give all of the people that see this access to that course. So I'll send you some details to uh, to give them access to it, free access. It'll go through the head to toe uh, theories and everything else and, and how to treat the uh, body for all kinds of conditions. And if they'd like, we'll be happy to send them the same guide or document that shows them how to how to do that for dogs, cats and horses and other animals. We've even got uh, some of our favorite chiropractors working on goats. There's some real cool prize goats out there. And uh, yes. they're seeing these same things, immediate improvements in these animals that uh, help them function better as well. But I'll, I'll send you access to all of that. And please share it with all, all of your attendees. And hopefully that will help them understand a lot of ways to be able to utilize this technology. Yeah, no, we we really appreciate that. That's very kind of you. And I definitely agree with you. You know, there's so much to learn. And, you know, the the tool itself is amazing. But then the methodology and how to use it, where to use it and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's where you get the the benefit. Um, so, you know, definitely appreciate that for sure. Um, animals, you know, that's interesting. You bring that up. So, uh, we had a dog that just had a, a recent surgery, maybe about a month or so ago. Um, and so I'm, uh, lasering my dog and I'm using vibration on her too. And I mean, literally by the next day, you wouldn't even know that anything happened to this animal. My wife was literally saying, okay, what, what's going on? She just had surgery yesterday. Why is she running around the, the house? Like what's going on? Like it was literally complete i i mean it sounds crazy but this dog was completely healed the next day you know all i did was laser and resimax and this dog was healed it was amazing um so thank you again for that that's amazing um you know one thing to to always understand here is the importance of clinical evidence uh, uh coupled with um like you were saying scientific scrutiny <clears throat> and going through <clears throat> proper research channels and all that stuff and um, of course, we need to understand how um, science works. And so we first, um, of course, have great clinical observations, and that dictates what direction we do and helps develop protocols and all of these things. And then there comes a time where um, it's time to start doing research. Uh, and that's what, you know, we're going through the same process. And um, and so I know we cannot talk a whole lot about it because of how research is uh, organized. We can't give away a lot of information and all that kind of stuff. But can you tell us just a little bit about some of the exciting things that you have going on? Absolutely. Um, our first clinical trials are underway currently, and uh, we are so excited to see the uh, results. Um, it's it's really neat to have um, clinicians scrutinize scrutinize this under a magnifying glass and try and understand if it works, how does it work? And what are the conditions by which it works? And our first study is involving headaches. Uh, we have plans for uh, for several additional uh, research studies, but you got to start somewhere. And uh, we thought it would be very nice for the world to understand uh, the scientific scrutiny and where our device lands on uh, on treating headaches. So look for that to come out. It'll uh, probably be out later this year, and uh, additional studies will be following that. And you're right, we have to. We have mm -hmm. to. Uh, we've observed a phenomenon in in using lasers and using our vibration devices. And we believe that it is different than any other vibration device uh, out there. We welcome the scrutiny of the scientific community to be able to share that uh, even better with the world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 
that's that's amazing um definitely thankful for again you just progressing you know science and helping people heal all over the world um you know something that's important to point out here is um you know the use of home care uh in our field you know we're you know seeing a lot of uh, neurological disorders whether it be brain injury or pain syndromes or um, dystonia or, you know, you, you name it, right? All kinds of different types of neurological disorders. The name of the game is neuroplasticity, right? So we need to generate positive neuroplastic change in these individuals. The key to doing that is having proper frequency, intensity, and duration of stimulus. So this person that has this dire situation, they're not going to come, you know, in one visit or two visits or whatever, and achieve that neuroplastic change, they need to continue care at home. And that's what I love so much about Resimax is that this is a great tool for clinicians to use clinically in their office, but it's also fantastic for uh, the, the patient and the whole family to be using at home, right? I mean, I don't know if you want to speak to that, but I mean, that's one thing that I love about this tool is it can go in the clinic, it can also go home, Right. Absolutely. In fact, one of the things that we've noticed is that if I treat you two or three days a week and you don't have the ability to do those things at home, it's going to take you twice or three times as long to be able to get better. But if you can dedicate 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes a day uh, following up every single day, your brain learns faster and responds faster and your recovery is much, much stronger and and lasts a lot longer. The um the other thing that's uh I, I forgot to mention, but I probably ought to, is uh is this fall you're gonna see a new product coming out from from uh we're we're well underway in our uh, production facilities right now. Our production facilities are 20 minutes from my home here in northern Utah, and uh we're making a miniature version of our device. And Very it's cool. going to be small. It's going to be the size of a hockey puck. And yeah. uh, and yet it'll have wings and things uh, on it. Um, 15 levels of intensity in that uh, protected uh, range that we have patented. And it's going to have three levels of our four patented algorithms. So essentially 12 levels of, of algorithms and very easy to manipulate. You'll now be able to do it on your phone and set That's a timer. Amazing. That's amazing. Nice. There's some, some things that we've been working on for over a year that are going to be ready to uh, demonstrate to the world in September. Awesome, man. Well, that's awesome. And and again, just innovation, man. That's, that's what the name of the game is. And uh, that's what you're all about. That's what we're all about. Uh, that's great. Um, well, thank you so much. Um, you know, I really appreciate you letting me come on here, you coming on with us. I mean, this is just, it's always a, a joy and a pleasure to get to speak with you and, you know, just love your company and love your mission. And, and thank you so much. You bet. And please go and help my buddies out in uh, Australia and New Zealand, that part of the world. Help us uh, spread Resimax to every koala. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.